Hey, it's Ed with Slow Car Fix, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what is wrong with all my cars and, uh, and what I have to fix to get ready for this driving season. So, it's early March in uh, Ontario, Canada, and Surprisingly, the weather's been great. I've actually had a couple of the cars out. I've done some work on some of them. I have a lot more to do to get things ready for the season. It's the way it goes. When you have a bunch of cars, you have to realize that invariably they are all going to be broken in one way or another. Um, some little, some big, but for the most part, they're all gonna have something wrong with them. Let's talk about what's wrong with my stuff. First things first, if you wanna know what I've been working on, um, it lives in here and that's as much as I'm gonna show you for right now. Um, I've been continuing work on the 55, and yeah, it's a lot of work. Uh, nothing really good to show on video right now. The one under the cover, let's start there. I had that out yesterday. Um, that is my 2013 Porsche Boxster. Um, I had it out, it's working great, everything's cool. Um, not really much to talk about there. It still has a year left of its, uh, used vehicle warranty, so I'll be looking for anything to pop up. And if it pops up, then it's gonna go to the dealer and uh, get paid for by them. Uh, the Model A runs and drives. Everyone asks, uh, for some reason, they don't, don't seem to think this thing, maybe it's because I have it tucked in the corner. They don't seem to think that it works uh, and that it's just decorative. But I actually, in the summertime, I use it quite a bit. Uh, short runs, you know, usually to go for coffee, go for breakfast, something like that. Uh, it's pretty good. The only thing is, um, it uh, it definitely marks its territory, and the the uh, fix it's almost 100 years old, right? So the fix for that, for me, anyways, is to just top it up and make sure that it's got gear oil in it, it's got um, engine oil, and everything's cool there. Other than that, uh, it's been a pretty good little car. Um, it's nice. I don't know. It's got some dog fur. So it does get used. It's uh, more of an operation than driving, but I enjoy it. Um, these two are quick to talk about. They're both my sons. Uh, that was his first car, 65 Corvair sedan uh, with the 95 horsepower power glide. He drove that to high school. He's 20, he'll be turning 25 this year. Uh, that car needs to come down this summer and get a bath. Um, it's on a tender. It should start right up. Uh, it would need some work, some going through because it hasn't been driven on the road in a couple of years. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty good car, very solid car, Bo body and paint wise is okay, but uh, it's very solid underneath. Um, but it probably needs some maintenance before getting any serious driving, but he's not ready to do that right yet. This one here, uh, is a 84 Mustang GT uh, convertible. It's an anniversary car. It only has like 50,000 miles on it. It's quite good condition, probably the nicest condition out of anything in here, uh, apart from the, the Boxster. Um, it, same thing, it hasn't been on the road in a while. It, it probably needs a few things. Um, I, would, uh, I would be looking at hoses and Hoses and uh, belts, and I believe that last time I fired it up, it spewed a bunch of power steering fluid all over the place. So um, it may need that. But uh, those two are, like I said, they're my sons. He lives about four hours away, so I'm not really worried about them. They just kind of sit in the corner. Uh, the Corsa. This is my 66 Oshawa built uh, Corsa. Uh, if you may recall, it had some trouble. Um, it had a new rebuilt engine put in it last year, uh, and it was working great. And, and last year still is, um, to my knowledge. So it needs an oil change because it um, still has the last of the break-in oil in it. So I got to get it up to temperature, do an oil change on it. Secondaries aren't hooked up. I've just been running it on the primaries, um, on the primary carburetors. So it needs a bath, it needs uh, the secondaries hooked up, it needs an oil change, and I have a clutch cable for it because the clutch cable 
has been repaired and I'm not really into that. So I've got a new clutch cable for it. So I need to do that. Um, did put new wheels on it last year. Really digging the way it looks. Love this car. It's a really good one. Um, it's, uh, I've had a lot of Corvairs and, and this one's a keeper for me for sure. Uh, so that one, it's kind of short list, nothing crazy. Um, we'll move on to the next one. This one, my 81 Malibu, this was my first car. Uh, yes, it's under the cover. This was my first car. I've had this thing since 1998-ish. Um, it has, uh, every panel's been replaced on it at this point. It's hardly the same car as my first car, but it is my first car. Uh, it has the 5.3 liter uh, out of a 2006, maybe, Chev, Chev truck. Um, it uh, runs and drives, but it does need some work. So what does this one need? Um, it's got a battery drain on it, uh, so it's not taking a charge. It's got a, it's a new battery, but it's drained. I see now the... It looks like I've got a slight leak on the transmission that I'm not really that worried about. Um, but it's, what's the big thing with this? There's something I can't remember. Let me think about it. Yes, I remember. Uh, so it's got the battery drain. I'm not really sure what's draining the battery, but something is killing the battery. It could be the cruise control module. I'm not really sure. Um, so it's 5.3 liter, 2006 with a 4L80 trans. Um, Pretty stout powertrain, everything's good. Like the engine's been gone through, it's got an upgraded cam. Um, this, the whole car has been documented on this channel. Uh, a whole pile of videos on it. Um, the big thing I gotta do with this, it's kind of a pain, is the body mounts are shot in, in the back. Um, where the body mounts to the frame, it's kind of known for these cars. The, uh, um, the, the body, the pocket where the mount sits is rotten. I have to cut through from the trunk floor down and uh, replace those body mounts, weld them in. It's not really that big of a deal for me anyways, because I've got the capability and skill set to do that, but it really sucks to take a grinder to a car that has nice paint. So I'll have to get it on the other side and uh, I'll have to, uh, plastic it all off and make sure that I'm not going to wreck my paint with sparks and that sort of thing. And I have to buy the mount kit and I will document that all in a video um, because I've never done it before. And maybe if I do it and struggle through it, you guys will learn something. All right, let's look at the rest here. The 64 Corvair, uh, this car, if you follow the channel, you'll know that this car was in a storage container or shipping container. We call them sea cans for 30 years. Um, basically what I got out of it was a relatively solid shell. Everything else had to be replaced. It's got all the interior. Uh, the engine was refreshed. I refreshed it with uh, new pistons and cylinders um, and redid the cylinder heads. I'm saying refreshed because I didn't split the block. Um, so I just did like a top end rebuild. Uh, Resealed the diff, resealed the trans, all new suspension, new brakes, all that sort of stuff. What's left on it is the trans is no good. So it shudders. Uh, I haven't, I've had a lot of Corvairs. I've had a lot of Power Glide Corvairs. This is the first one that I've had with an actual Power Glide failure. Um, and it's failed pretty spectacularly. It shudders like crazy. It'll almost take the wheel out of your hand. Um, which is likely why it was parked 35 years ago. So uh it's drivable but not by much so i have a used transmission to put in it that i got from a friend of mine um i'm gonna try that first because these power glides are usually pretty robust and it only cost me 80 dollars worth of gaskets and seals and about 40 dollars worth of fluid and uh, and my time and i can have the transmission swap so i have to do that um, and like I said, I have a used transmission. If that doesn't work, I'll probably go to the Corvair Ranch. He's got pretty good prices on rebuilt transmissions. Uh, I'll probably get him to rebuild one and then bring him a core. Um, but that involves, you know, uh, a weekend trip to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, so that's 
not my first choice. I'm gonna try and swap it first and see how it goes. Other than that, you can't really tell, but like, it's just a cheap, crappy paint job from 35 or 40 years ago. Uh, it's lost its shine. I did polish it back up and it's kind of not great. So it's not, it's kind of a patina-ish, I'm using that term loosely, car. So I was, I'm toying with a wipe on clear coat from either the Vice Grip Garage guy or uh, patina sauce or whatever it's called, uh, sweet patina. Uh, one of those type, type things with a wipe on clear coat. I might do something like that just to make it pop a little bit. Uh, we'll see, jury's still out on that, but I gotta get it. Uh, it drives really, really well um, once it's in top gear and you're, and you're cruising along, because uh, it's got all new suspension, it's got a good alignment, good tires. Like it, it just, they work well when their um, suspension and steering and stuff is all new. They really, uh, it really makes a big difference in a proper alignment. So, uh, I enjoy driving that car. It's, it's kind of a, uh, I don't want to say beater, but it's kind of a, that sort of style of a car where I can leave it outside or I can park it wherever and not really worry about it. Most of my stuff is anyways, but, um, that's one that I'd like to be able to drive to work and stuff like that and, uh, and not really worry about it. Um, but unfortunately the transmission's no good. So I got to deal with that. That will be in the spring. Um, and I'll document that on the, on the channel as well. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to see uh, with any of this crap, uh, let me know. Um, I think I'll do a walk around video on Jacob's car because I haven't really showed that Corvair on the channel too much, so I'll do that. Uh, onto the ramp side. Ramp side's old reliable. It doesn't really need anything too much. Um, it, uh, uh, let me think about that. Oh, the clutch chatters when it's in reverse. Um, it's been that way for a while. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, last year, I did notice that the choke was sticking on the one side when I uh, drove it to the uh, Corsa Ontario 50th anniversary deal. Um, so it's running a little rich on one side because the choke was sticking. So I can deal with that sort of stuff. Other than that, it'll get a spring oil change and, and it's pretty good to go. It's, it's a really good truck. It's a Nevada truck. There's no rust on it anywhere. Um, it's, it's got a 110 horse car engine um, and a four speed transmission. Uh, they made these from 61 to 64. And this one would have came with, a, with an 80 horsepower engine. So it's been upgraded with a, an engine that would come in a, in a later car. On to Slowbug, my 66 Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, I did a video, my last video, actually, thank you, because it did really well, um, for my channel anyways. Um, the problem I've hit with that with YouTube is for some reason, the videos on the bug weren't doing well. So it would bring down the rest of my videos for the algorithm, however that works. Anyway, uh, last video did well. Thanks for all your support. Appreciate your comments. It helps a lot. Comments, giving me the thumbs up, letting me know that you're interested in seeing it. Um, Somehow the YouTubes figure that out. So I just spent a bunch of money on this car. Uh, I talked about that in my last video. It's pretty good. I wanna do some cosmetic work on it. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this car, believe it or not, it looks like it's two-tone in the video. It looks like it's two-tone, some sort of dark black or green color and a silver, but this silver is actually bare metal. It's bare metal that's been clear coated. Um, I get that question a lot. Like uh, people say they like the two-tone. It's ironic that the top part of the two-tone doesn't have any paint. So what had happened here was uh, a friend of mine used to own this car years and years ago. I didn't buy it from him. I bought it from somebody in between. And, um, and uh, my friend Ryan that had it, he, I guess he wanted to make it patina. And uh, I think he dumped some aircraft stripper on it and did some things and it ended up kind of not really great and he gave up on it. And, uh, and another gentleman, Colin, bought it and Colin made uh, uh, lemonade out of lemons and he stripped the rest of the paint off the roof, gave it that, gave it that brushed look, clear coated it to protect it, painted the front fenders uh, flat black, the front end flat black and tried to blend some of the green here. Um, but you can't really tell, but it's like a couple of different shades and in the sunlight, it doesn't really look that great. 
Um, but like, once again, this is a driver kind of car at some point, someday, because I, I've decided like this car is hanging around. Um, someday I, I'll paint it. I'll do a full body and paint on it, but it's getting to the point now where the clear that he put on here, which I think is just like a hardware store clear, um, is probably done and it needs more. So I think I'm gonna do something with the side, with the green and the black to try and at least tie it in together better and then re-clear the whole thing again, um, which is not really that big of a deal. I'm not gonna put a huge pile of effort into it because it's not really that kind of car. It's not a show car, it's just to have some fun with it. Uh, the elephant that's not in the room, my 57 truck. My 57 truck, um, it's uh, got a six liter. I did a, the swap, did it all, documented it all on the channel. Six liter with a 4L80 trans. Uh, I've been battling all last year. It was throwing a code for shift solenoid. Um, I tried to figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Replaced both shift solenoids. Uh, we fluid and filter change, all that sort of stuff. So I brought it to, uh, I didn't do that. Um, Greg at Classic Auto Repair did that. So, um, and we thought everything was cool. I drove it all last summer, everything was good, but it was throwing that code intermittently. Um, so I thought, well, I'll drop it off over there uh, to Classic Auto Repair and let them have a look. They're the experts, I'm just a hack that does this for a hobby. Um, they threw a scan on it this morning and uh, as it turns out, transmission's no good. Um, I guess I didn't pick up on it, but the, uh, I knew that with the tune, I've got the shift pressures cranked so it shifts firm. And so it hangs till about 6,000 RPM between shifts uh, with wide open throttle rather than the typical 54 or 5,600 uh, shift from stock. Um, and yeah, so it wasn't shifting. I, I knew it wasn't shifting under wide open throttle. You would have to back out of the throttle a little bit for it to, to shift. I guess it also isn't really shifting into second, which I didn't notice. Um, it might be sometimes shifting to second, but for the most part, it's going from first to third. And that's not good. So, um, yeah, it's going to need a transmission rebuild. So I'm getting some prices on that. Uh, I don't know how to rebuild transmissions and don't really care to learn. So it will get a rebuilt transmission and we'll figure out how that's going to all happen. But I'll probably go back and get it later today, bring it back home and uh, sleep on it a little bit. I'm trying to not sleep on the truck, but think about the truck when I'm supposed to be sleeping and uh, figure out what's... Uh, what the story is with that, uh, what I can do. Um, I'm debating on good use transmission, but how do you know what you're getting? Anyway, I'll keep you updated on what comes out of that. But I guess the point of this video is just to let you know that um, I'm very fortunate to have all these things and I've worked really hard to get them, but it's also a lot of work to maintain them and keep them going. It's a lot of work to, uh, to keep this stuff. Um, uh, other than that, our daily drivers are doing okay. Uh, I had to do some work on my Tesla that I drive back and forth to work every day. Uh, I had the, it's got 200,000 kilometers on it and I had its first mechanical failure. Um, it needed a heater and they changed that, the, the Tesla dealer. Um, I don't know what they did, but they turned it around in a couple hours. And, uh, and it wasn't actually that expensive. So that's the first real repair I've had and it's got 200,000 kilometers on it and I've had it for four years. Um, my Dodge Ram tow pig, it's been great. Uh, I make sure that I drive it once a week maybe uh, to keep all the brakes good and everything like that. Uh, wife's new car is pretty good. She's also got a 06 Miata um, and it's low kilometer, really good car. Uh, doesn't really need anything, probably needs an oil change this year. Um, it's sitting on a battery tender. I think that covers 
almost everything. Some little things, some big things, a couple of transmissions by the look of it. Um, the big thing is uh, I've always got something to drive. <laughs> There's no shortage on that. Very fortunate. I've worked really hard for all this stuff, but uh, it's a job in itself just to maintain this stuff. And, and sometimes it's, sometimes you think about it and you go, well, maybe I shouldn't have so many of this, many of these and just really focus on, uh, on a few, but um, then you end up building up some that you really like and you don't really want to get rid of them. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm really happy with what I have. I've got, a, I think, a decent variety. There's a couple of things that I'd still like to get that require a bunch more money, but um, it also costs money to maintain these things. So let me know if there's any of these cars that you want to, me to focus on one thing or another to make a video on, uh, because I can do that. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. There's videos on pretty much all of these cars. Uh, so have a look through the channel. There's over a hundred videos, uh, lots of stuff to look at. And thanks for your support.